In this video, I'll be simplifying async await in JavaScript. Async await is a nicer and easier to read syntax for working with promises compared to the traditional way of working with promises. Here I'll be learning about this syntax and we'll see how to use async await to improve the way we write promises in our code. I have two promise examples here, a set timeout promise and a fetch API promise. And we'll see how to improve this with async await. Firstly, let's look at these two keywords, starting from async. Async is a keyword you can use before your function. So you declare your normal function like this. Let's say function print name. This is a normal function. But then when you put async here, this now becomes a function that returns a promise. And to verify that, let's say I do const result print name John Doe. If I come here now and I do console log results, you can see that we have a promise object here, which resolves with this value. But if I remove this async from here, this is just a regular function and we have John Doe. So when you put the async before your function, that means that function is going to return a promise. And because it is returning a promise, it means that when you call this function and this is a promise, you can now use results.then for if the promise resolves, then you get the value and then we can say the value is value here. Let's put the console.log here. Run this. You can see that we have the value is and then we get the value that is resolved from the promise. This can be a regular function and it can also be an arrow function. So we can have an arrow function like print name arrow. This is a normal arrow function. But when you put a sync here, this function now returns a promise. So what we have here, you can think of it as similar to function print name it returns a promise dot resolve and I'm just going to pass this in this resolve. If I should run this still with our result dot then you see that we get the same result. Well, then what about the await keyword? Or well, the await keyword allows you to execute asynchronous promises synchronously, which improves the way that you write your promises. So let's see an example with the await keyword. We have this function called set timeout promise. And in this function, I am wrapping a set timeout with a promise. So a set timeout runs asynchronously in Java script but by wrapping it in a promise then we know that this function is going to return a promise what's the traditional way for handling promises we can use the then method so what i have here is a function called timeout then outside here i have console log outside one then i call the timeout function and then i have console log outside two now watch what happens what you see happen is that we have outside one which is coming from here then we call this timeout function and in this timeout function we have response 3000 and we call this set timeout promise and and then we try to log the response 3000 variable and you'd probably expect that the value of this variable is going to be this value that was resolved here but that is not going to be the case because the promise hasn't been resolved yet this set timeout is going to run asynchronously and when it is done running that is when we're going to get this resolved value so you can see here that the promise shows that this process is pending and then here we have after three seconds do something but as you probably observed this didn't even take three seconds before it ran. And then after this three seconds do something, we then get outside two. And when our set timeout finally completes, then that is the end of the session. So if I should run this again, you can see that after three seconds shows immediately. And then the console was idle for a while before it finished. What we can do here now is to chain this promise with then. So here I have response 3000 dot then. So when the, the promise has resolved, then I get the result and I do console log result. And now let's run this and see what happens this time. If I run this, you see we have outside one again, we have promise pending because this was pending as this promise hasn't resolved already. After three seconds, do something runs immediately instead of three seconds later, then we get outside two, which is coming from here. And then we now have timeout of three thousand milliseconds done which is coming from this then method which is when the promise has been resolved now by using the await keyword you can say that when you come to this point make sure the promise resolves before you continue with the remaining part of the function currently when it gets to this point even when the promise is already in the pending state the remaining parts of the function keeps running but with await like i said you can execute an asynchronous promise synchronously so here I can put await, but you cannot 
cannot use a weight without using a sink. So your function needs to have the async keyword before you can use the await keyword in it. Now I can comment this part and watch what happens. Now if I run this, you see we have outside one, outside two. After three seconds, you get timeout of 3000 milliseconds done. And then you have after three seconds do something. So what is happening here? Here we have console log outside one, which is outside one here. That's fine. Then we have timeout. Now what happens in timeout? We have response 3000 equal to we await this. Now by awaiting this, what's going to happen is that this function will then pause here until this promise has been resolved this function is not going to continue executing the remaining parts await is like saying wait until this is done we pause for three seconds but when you pause it doesn't mean that the whole of your javascript program is going to pause what javascript does is it's going to pause here and it's going to take note that i am not yet done with the timeout function i'm pausing here until this promise is resolved and then javascript continues to run the other things outside this function so it runs console log outside two and that is why here we have outside two now when this has finally resolved then it's going to assign that resolved value to this variable and then by doing console log response 3000 this is the console log here timeout of 3000 milliseconds done and then we can run this after three seconds if we should try this again you see we have three seconds then the timeout log shows and then we have the after three seconds comment so this is how the await keyword allows you to synchronously run promises that would rather run asynchronously as we saw with the then method this doesn't pause the function the rest of the function runs and the promise resolves later but with await you can do a pause until this is done now let me show you another example so here we have a fetch api promise and the fetch method in javascript returns a promise so if you use a sync here what you are saying is that this function should return a promise but if you don't use a sync but you are using a method that returns a promise that means this function is still going to return a promise so here this gets to do takes an id and then we are returning fetch this and fetch this is going to return a promise then here we have a function called interpret to do which takes an id it passes that id to get to do id here we have console log to do so i have console log outside one interpret to do console log outside two by the way i'm using this free testing api json placeholder so you can come here to to test apis with the fetch method axios or anything here going back here now let's say i run this so what we get here is we have console log outside one this is this then we call in interpret to do with two and here we pass this two to get to do but because get to do returns a promise and that promise hasn't been resolved then the to do is currently going to hold a promise pending value and then here we have console log interpret to do continues which is this and then we have console log outside two which is this so let me comment all these other parts i have in here now what i'm doing in here is i do to do dot then in this then i get the resolved response and then i call response.json response.json also returns a promise by the way i have a video on the fetch api where i dive deeper so if some of these things seems unfamiliar to you can check out that video i'll leave a link in the video description so this returns a promise and then i can chain another dot then for that promise and then in that promise i get the resolved json or object from the api then here i just have an interpretation string where i concatenate the to do dot tie to and i concatenate concatenate the to do dot completed then i do console log interpretation then here i have another to do where i call get to do with the id that i passed plus one and then i do the same thing for next to do we have dot then for this we have dot then for the interpretation now what you see here is because i wanted to get the first to do before i get the second to do you can see how i had to use dot then dot then then come here another dot then dot then this can potentially affect readability which is why the async await syntax syntax is nicer i will show you how to improve this with the async await syntax now let's run this again and see what happens first we get outside one which is this then we get interpret to do of two we pass that two here to the get to do this returns a promise so doing console log to do is going to return a promise pending and because this promise is still 
pending, what the function does is it doesn't wait for that promise to completely resolve. It jumps to this line console log interpret to do continues. So that is why we get this interpret to do continues. Then after this line, we have outside two, which is outside two here. And then some seconds later, we get current to do title is this and completed state is this. This is coming from console log interpretation. So because this runs asynchronously, when the promise is resolved, that is when we get that in the console. And then we have another promise here, get to do returns a promise. And then we use dot then again on that promise for when it is resolved. If I should run this again, you can see that the APIs take a bit of time to resolve. Well, how can we improve this with the await keyword? So first we have our to do, and then we can say await get to do, and we pass the ID. We have an error here because we haven't yet added the async keyword to this function. After getting the ID, remember that this is going to pause this function until this promise has resolved. I'm going to call this to do response. I can now say the to do is equals to await to do response dot json remember that the fetch api returns a promise and in that promise you get a response and when you call response dot json that also returns a promise so this is going to pause again until the to do response dot json promise is resolved then when we do that we can now get the next to do so i'm going to have next to do response this is going to pause again and while it is pausing javascript can do other things maybe execute handlers for events or execute other parts of your code then here i can now get the next to do and this would pause again i can come here now to have my interpretation like this and come here to also have the second interpretation i'll call this next interpretation and that's the end of this function so you can see how we had a lot of then dot then here i have now improved it to this which is now easier to read you get your to do you get the json part then you get your interpretation then you get your second to do you get the json part and your interpretation i'm not doing any dot then dot then or nested dot dens now if i should run this you're going to see what will happen is that first we have outside one here then we call interpret to do two which is going to call this function interpret to do two but then when it comes to this line where we have our await this is going to pause the function call until this promise is resolved it is not going to run this part it's not going to run the remaining part javascript can come back outside the function to run other things so it runs console log outside two which is the outside two that we now get here now when this has resolved um, javascript can continue the execution of this function interprets to do it comes to this point again pauses again because we have another await until this is resolved then javascript goes to the next line we get the interpretation then we log the interpretation which is this first part here then we come here to get the next to do we have await javascript pauses the function call javascript can continue with other things that are happening in your program and when this is resolved javascript can come back to continue with the next line it pauses again because we have await and when it is done it gets the interpretation or oh, this should be next to do not current to do it gets the interpretation it logs the interpretation and when it is done it now runs interpret to do continues so you have interpret to do continues at the end here if you remember previously interpret to do was logged before we got our interpretations and that's because we weren't waiting for the promises to resolve but by using the await keyword we can now wait for the promises to resolve before we go to the next line so i hope this helps you to see how the async await syntax makes it easier to work with promises in javascript especially when one promise depends on the previous promise you can easily wait for the previous promise before you continue with the next promise now what about error handling with traditional promises you have the catch method for catching errors let me comment all of this uncomment this part here and let's say we enter a wrong api address here so let me just enter y y y which is going to throw an error then on this to do dot then dot then i can come here and add a catch where i have the error and then i can say console log error so if i should run this now we have outside one we have a pending promise the function continues we have outside two and then we have this error fetch field how do you do that with async await here you can use your type catch operator so i can comment all of this again for this part i can do a try 
and then I push all of these here and then I can do a catch so I can catch the error and do console.log error. So if I run this, we get the same thing. But in this case, we have outside one, outside two. And because this fetch here failed, then it jumps to the catch block and we are able to catch the error type error fetch failed. So traditional promises, you have the dot catch method with async and await. You can use try and catch. One question you probably have now is what if you wanted to use await without having to create an async function well if you want to use await in a function then you have to put your async here but you can also use await outside a function so in this case i can use await directly here this is what is called top level await so using await at the top level instead of inside an async function for this let's go back to our set timeout promise example so let's say you wanted to await this set timeout promise you could do await set timeout promise and maybe this waits for 3000 and then you can do console log 3 seconds later and before i run this code i want you to know that top level awaits only works in modules and it works in modern javascript environments so in older javascript environments you won't be able to use the await keyword outside an async function but in modern environments you can do that but they have to be modules now i'm running this javascript code with node.js and this file is seen as a module so things are going to work fine if i run node test you can see after three seconds because we are waiting for that three seconds that three seconds promise has to run first before we get three seconds later but now if i should go to a browser environment this might not work so let's just say i do an await console.log even if console.log is not really a promise now if i do this and i go to my browser here if i run this you can see we get an error await is only valid in async functions and the top level bodies of modules so for this to work in my browser environment i have to specify a type of module so that my browser can treat this javascript here as a module and because it's a module i can now use the top level await so if i go back here and i refresh you see we don't get that error anymore by the way this is a demo that i worked on with html and css i would leave a link in the video description if you're interested in checking it out one thing i want to point out though is that you should be careful of using top level awaits because when you have your top level await it means that every other thing below that await is going to of course wait for the promise to resolve so maybe that's what you want then of course you can use your top level await but if that is not what you want then you want to use your await in an async function so that that way only the function will be paused and the rest of your program can still run. If you use top level await like this and maybe this promise takes 10 seconds to run, it means every other thing in your program is going to wait for that 10 seconds. It can cause your application to freeze or cause some other unexpected problems that you do not want. I'll make a separate video on modules if you'd like to learn more about it and I'll link it in the video description. So I hope this video helps you to understand async await and shows you how this syntax is much cleaner compared to the traditional way of handling promises dot then and dot catch i have more videos on my channel where i dive deeper into the fetch api you can see some of those videos currently on the screen you can check out any of them if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others and subscribe for more simplified javascript videos like this